Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. and I was born July 4th of 1986. Today I'm going to talk about something that I think is probably the number one thing that is going to be probably the most dangerous thing that one can do when it comes down to trying to get some some better work with your dog and better information and better better know-hows and figure out how to be able to work with them and do anything with some dogs and not only just some dogs but some animals. I've gotten really really bad advice about how to take care of goats and how to take care of my donkey and what to do with my cows that you know this comes down to I'm going to straight up say anything in your life that you're just unsure of of making sure where you're getting that information from to get the assistance that you're needing. This is one thing that I'm going to say is you know for a I'm a, I'm a dog trainer that says you know go to the dog parks they're cool but I'm also going to be the same dog trainer that's going to say it's cool for your dog but for you as a human it is the most challenging place that you're ever going to go. And you know what else is challenging? Your friends and your family. You know what else is challenging? Listening to a guy like me talk about some stuff about some dogs on a video. That you you never see me like handle leash, do this, do this, do anything, but taking advice from someone that, that you just don't know. And that's where for me, it comes down to you need to see something in your face to do it. Because I get a lot of comments that are very the same and similar when it comes down to working with some dogs. That, you know, I've owned dogs my whole life. And my whole life, my dogs, and my dogs this. Because that's what you're going to find when you go to the dog parks. That's what you're going to listen to when you listen to your family. That's what your friends are going to say to you. You know, my dog, and I do it like this with my dog. My dog this, my dog that. My dog, and, and I've had 10 dogs my whole life, and I know what I'm doing. 10 dogs is what a busy dog trainer, we handle that in a week. I'm handling more in a week than a person has had in their entire lifetime. So you're going to tell me that that one person with, we're not going to go there right now. But one thing that I'm just going to say is very, very interesting is the information that you're going to get, you're going to kind of get like, I should try this. I should try that. I should do this. I should do that. And that's where things in most cases starts to get complicated for you. starts to get tricky for you. starts to get, you hit some stumbling blocks where you're just like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, why aren't things, uh, Oreo, leave me alone. Get down. That's why I'm wondering why things are, uh, uh, are not getting any better for you. Because you're getting advice from somebody that you don't live their lifestyle. You don't have their routine. You don't go by their schedule. You don't do what they do. You don't have the same type of behavior that they have. You don't have anything the same as another human being. That's where I think a lot of us are really, really struggling with these dogs because we think that we see someone else do something and we think that we can like replicate that. And I'm going to tell you, that's false. That's not really going to happen because me and you are completely different. Me and you do different stuff. I don't care. This is one thing that I'm going to say that I will, I will be able to confirm this with the majority of all y'all out here. When you have your dog that you're going to stay frustrated with, you don't know. You can't get your dog to sit. You can't get your dog to loose leash walk. You can't get your dog to stop reacting at people. And then you go out on town for a couple of days. Hey, Oreo. You go out of town for a couple of days and you have someone else watch your dog or you take your dog to a facility or, you, or nowadays, most of us, we just have people come to our houses and they, and they, they do the dog sitting thing. And they watch our dogs and your dog sitter is going to say to you, you got the nicest dog on the planet, man. Your dog is amazing. Your dog walks so nicely on the leash. Your dog never jumps on me. Your dog is just so polite waiting for his food. Your dog is, is when I say sit, he's just like super excited. Like I'm, I'm going to pretty much guarantee that a lot of us have this. And not only just say pet sitting, but how about another family member just shows up to your house that just doesn't, doesn't really come around that often. He may jump all on that first for a minute, but you're going to notice like about an hour or two, or get down, an hour or two into this, that you're going to run into that scenario that that person is able to maneuver and handle and, and get your dog to do things that you just like blown, like, I've been working on this for five years. How did you just come in in 15 seconds and be able to get my dog to do something? If you would take, say, that person's advice on how to get your dog to look good, you're going to fail because that person is that person and it's not you. That's where the beautiful role of a dog trainer is, to be able to see what you're struggling with, to be able to match with your dog that's also an individual, to be able to get your dog to be able to pair and be able to match with you. If you're taking advice from somebody that's not seeing what you are and what you're all about, that's where you're going to continuously keep on struggling. And that's where the, 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 the thing is that I really want to be able to, to communicate. That there's, the, all dog trainers aren't, aren't savage, mean, and ruthless, and out for money. And they want to see help. They want to get you in a better place. And it's for us to, if you're confused, you don't know, you want to, you want to find that person to come into you that's going to be able to actually help you out. And that's where we got to figure out how to be able to dance around this whole situation here. You know, if you're, if you're having problems with something, you're not going to go to someone who has just they've only done it themselves and they don't have any repertoire with like showing other people how to do it their, their, their advice is going to be absolutely meaningless but the advice from someone that's doing this all day doing this over and over there's a difference between the the, the hobbyist the professional and the one that's just before the hobbyist where you're just a dog owner i've owned 15 dogs in my life and that's one a hobbyist that trains a dog a month maybe one a year 
And then the professional that's training 10 to 15 dogs a week, most people are training. And then moving on to doing in a month's worth of time, doing more, just an, a crazy amount of different dogs. And not only dogs, but working with people. There's a big difference in, uh, Oreo, I don't, I don't have a leash on me. I'll, I asked you to get down, homie. There, there, there's a, a big difference in what's, what's going on here with how to be able to get some true help with you. That if you're going to these places and listening to these people, that's what's confusing you and messing you up. Because I don't know why we, we, we want to get on to someone, especially, like, I, don't, I don't understand this personally, people. This is just something that just is still, I'm still studying this human behavior here that's, that's fascinating to me. But if your dog is already good to go, why are you watching a dog training video on how to get your dog to get in a better place? If you're already able to run a five-minute mile, why are you trying to find someone to give you research on how to run a five-minute mile? You already know how to do it. Why are you like researching and researching to figure out how to still do it? Or, or, or not even still do it, but just to do it to begin with and you've never done it before. If you already know how to fly planes, why are you watching people's videos of how to, how to fly a plane? Like, it, it, it just, that's, that's confusing to me. That's where I think that we're looking for validation in some sorts. And especially when you want to just say a whole lot about your experience with how good and how this. And, and it, it's just confusing. And that's the type of people that love to just tell you about how to work with your dog. Because they've done it. They know how to work with your dog. They know how to do this with your dog. Who cares what I can do with your dog? It's what you can do with your dog. That's something that a lot of us really need to keep and stay and, and just put deep into our brains. Is you are the one that has to do this all. There's something that's just working with the dog today. If I take this dog and I walk it and walk it, it's going to be so pristine with me. But it has it in it that it's trying to protect. This is why it's reactive towards other dogs. Because it's trying to protect its owner. Its owner somehow, some way, the language that's just given, please do this. And the dog thinks it needs to do it. And today is the final the aha moment that the dog realized, like, oh, you, you, you clearly don't want me doing this. Like, yeah, no, I don't. I don't want this, girlfriend. We're going to stop this. But if I take that dog, if you take that dog, you would get a level of success. But as soon as you get that dog back to that owner again, now the owner is running into a very, 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 very sticky situation. Because they just put all this time and all this energy, all this resource into it, and they're absolutely nowhere. This is the story that I hear a lot of people say. I, I did all this with my dog, but yet it's still not any better. It's still doing the same stuff. But with the trainer, it looks good. Of course. With your neighbor, it's going to look good. With your husband, even, it's going to look good. Or your wife or your kids, it's going to look good. I don't know how many people's households that y'all's kids <laughs> have way better control over the dogs than, than, than the parents do. It's because the kids don't care. They're just like, ah, whatever. The dog runs away, it runs away. And the dogs love that. They love that just neutral stance of just, I don't care. They love that. They, they love to just be around people like that. And, and, and when you're, you're thinking that you're going to take this advice from someone that's not actually helping other people, but just helping themselves, that's going to be some very dangerous stuff. Because that's one thing that I, I understand the human behavior of. We love to just speak about what we know of and put it all out there. We, we love to validate ourselves with the information and knowledge that we know. But that's to make themselves look better, not to make sure that you're getting better. That's the huge shift that I've noticed in just my short lifetime that I've been on this planet of realizing that there's more people out here that want to make themselves look better as opposed to making somebody else look better. And they want to, if they, and if they ever do make somebody else look better, they want to make sure that they are the, the, the credit behind it, why they are in a better place right now. That's, that's the big shift that's going on on the planet right now. That I don't think a lot of people really pay much attention to stuff like this. Because when you're, when you're trying to listen to someone and it's all, all they care about is how many likes and how many views and how, how many people just want them, you're, you're going to get, what I'm going to straight up say is bad information. Because they don't care about you, they care about themselves to make themselves look a certain way. Now something that is, is very challenging, because we've got to dance around this world to find the ones that actually want to see you get better. And that's the part where if you're not getting any help, you're not getting any success with what it is you're doing. You need to start dancing around these people and stop listening to all these outsiders that are just trying to tell you this and tell you this and tell you that and tell you this and do this and do that. And you're going to end up absolutely nowhere. And, and in reality, you're going to make it worse. You're going to make it way worse. You need to be able to figure out how to be able to bring someone in that's going to be able to communicate something effectively to help you out. And they don't care. They don't care. You know, they're trying to get paid, but they ain't trying to be on your Instagram reel while you showing off your dog. They, they don't want no, no, no credit. Like, just, I, I, I don't even show up at your house. Like, I didn't even do nothing for you. And there's a lot of people out here like that. But the ones that are out here that are like that, that are actually able to give you the help, everybody wants to pass up on them because they're not showing off. They're not showboats. They're not, like, trying to impress people with, look at how great my dog looks. They're just, they're real. And then when you see their dogs, they're going to look real to you, like you're what you want your dog to look like. They're not going to be these professional stage acting show looking things. And we're, 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 we're subscribing on to these things that watching people that have these, these show looking things and thinking like, that's what I want. But I'm telling you, you do not know what's going on behind closed doors. That's why for me, 
I want to be as absolute transparent as absolute possible, as transparent and, and as open as it can be. You know, when, I, when I'm when i working, I got things I'm working on with my dogs and I'm going to continuously keep on working on. They're not just so perfect and everything looks so great. And I want to show you what real world results, real world expectations, real world living looks like. Not this fake fantasy show stuff. We love to write these big, huge checks to people to, to put on a show. But then when you're actually just living with that dog, you're you're like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I just paid all that money. Everything should be good. Like, what is happening right now? And we pass up on the guys and the girls that are just doing the real stuff out here. Because we're like, oh, no, that, I, I don't know about that. I, 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 don't, I don't know. When you're looking at that person with their animal, when I give you my dogs, they're going to look different. You know, this dude might be pretty cool with you. He's pretty neutral to a lot of different people. He walks really good with people. But that's just, that's his, his character, who he is. That's not all dogs. This dog is wild with me. He may be so soft and so submissive and look at you and lay and snuggle and cuddle with you and let you pet him all day. But with me, it's, it's, a, it's a party all the time, man. We always add it. But you don't want to look at what someone is able to do with their dog, but look at what they're able to do with your dog. Who cares what someone's dog looks like? And their advice, I'm going to tell you, is just absolute meaningless, nonsensical words that are going to be said to you. Just not nothing for you. It's pointless. Because they have what they have with their dog, and their dog, them themselves individual, their dog individual, and you got two individuals put together, and that's who they are. That's not who you are with your animal. And that person has no idea who what your dog is even about. We got some people out here that only work with a certain type of dog. You only work with shepherds. You only work with, with uh, uh, no prey drive driven dogs. You only work with dogs that are obsessive about prey drive. You only work certain type of dogs. Where dog trainers work all dogs. Most of them out here that I've paid attention to and seen. We work everything. We try to figure out how to be able to get this dog motivated to want to do something. And it has no care for food, and treats, no toys. It don't care about nothing, man. How are we going to get that dog to work? As opposed to the other dog that's like, it's crazy and, and wild. Uh, uh, get off him. Get down. It's crazy and wild over, over leaves that are moving. Where, where you're going to take advice from someone whose dog doesn't even respond to a squirrel. And they're telling you how to get your dog to get away from squirrels. And it doesn't even respond because it has no drive in it. That information to you is pointless because you have your individual dog that's having its own challenges. You got a dog that just has never reacted to another dog before. And you're going to listen to what someone has to say about how to get your dog out of, out of a reactive mode. That's why I mean personally, and something that I would just suggest to all dog trainers, get you all these, these, these trouble case dogs, man. These trouble case dogs. Stop getting this, this perfectly bred awesome looking puppy and raise that up but get you the dogs that are challenging because people out here are having these issues and we got to figure out how to be able to work through these issues ourselves instead of trying to put on a show to try to collect money and not actually giving anybody any sort of results that's the biggest thing that i see going on today that is so challenging all this outside stuff and thinking that i'm going to select a certain person because they hey they, their stuff looks like this or their stuff looks like that not knowing what that thing looks like behind closed doors because like I said, this dude here, this one's cool. But this one here behind closed doors, when the screen is off, he's moving. He's, he, he's on the go. He's on the go. He can look good for a little bit of time for me. But for, for as the other 24-7 in his life, is on the go. It's on the move. We, we're, we're moving. We're moving. I don't need to watch him that he's going to get into something wrong, but he's moving. He, he's, he's not like, I want to be close to you. He's not like, I want to be on a leash with you. He's not like, I want to maintain a stay with you. He is moving. And to, to, to say that, I can show something on a video to make it, I'm the good trainer, I'm the best trainer, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the right on trainer because I can get my dog to do this. So, so if you listen to me, your dog is going to look like this. That's lying. That's absolute mass manipulation because your dog is not going to do what this dog does. Your dog is not going to be like that dog is. Your dog is going to be like yours is with you. And that's something that I think a lot of us are getting very confused with out here. That we're, we're looking for, we're, we're going off of what we see what someone else has as opposed to what someone else is able to do. That's why me, my number one, I don't show up with no demo dog to try to show off to show you anything. I'm like, let me, can I put my leash on your dog is my first question outside of, hey, how's it going? But it's, can I put my leash on your dog? Because it's, it's, it's every, every household I go into, the dog is just, it, they're on the move, man. <laughs> I like that energy because that's why I love this dog so much. But that's not something you want inside of your household. And he also doesn't live in no household. So I don't care. I love that energy. But it's just that that's that, that back and forth that we got going here. And I was like, can I put my leash on your dog? And then I show you what is going on with your dog. I don't care what dog I bring here to show you that I work. That is still not your dog and that's still not you. That is me with a dog. That's not going to teach you anything because you with your dog is completely just, just 
100% uniqueness. None of us human beings are the same. Some of us could look similar. None of these dogs are the same. Some of them look similar, but none are the same. They all are completely different with what it is that they're looking for. Some don't like to be touched, man. Some are cool with touches. Some don't like treats. Some love treats. Some don't even really care to eat their dang food, man. Some dogs know how to self-regulate themselves, that you are not feeding them any extra, you're not feeding them any little. They just, they know what they're doing. You can leave 50 pounds of food down and they just eat what they eat. So you can't, I'm not, you can't train that dog with no treats and no food. It knows what it's doing. Some dogs are just, they're, 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 they have zero care to be affectionate with the human being. They have zero care to want to be on a leash with you. Some dogs don't want to leave your side. They are stuck to you. They are all completely different. And we cannot come at each of these dogs and think like, oh, this is the training method that's going to work. That's where it's an amazing thing for us as human beings to, to try out what we see that we would want to do with this animal. Instead of thinking that I'm going to listen to what they have to say because they got a similar looking dog or this and this or that. They do not know. They do not know what's going on with you. That's one thing that I just have this just huge, just, just aha today of really, really seeing. Because I was like, hold on a second. How, how about you just stay back there and I keep the dog? And the dog was chill, man. And then as soon as she came back up again, the dog is going wild. I'm just like, it, I can't do nothing behind closed doors to make this go away. This is the pairing and the bond that you two have. And we got to work you through this. I can't, I can't, you can't watch someone work another dog and think that that technique is even going to work for you. Sometimes a lot of these techniques, that's why it's, it's sticky for me to talk about certain things. Because I, I have to make sure that everything is, is, is universal. Everything is just, hey, or everything is, is universal so that th there's no room for error. That if you try it and it works, awesome. But if you try it and it doesn't work, hey, uh, get off him, man. Get down. And if you try it and it doesn't work, then it's not going to damage your dog in any sort of way. Because there's a lot of that goes on on here. They say, oh, you want to get your dog to stop, stop uh, Oreo, get down. You want to stop your dog from uh, uh, loose leash walking, get down. Uh, uh, in five minutes, this is how you do it. This is how you get it done. You put the leash on and you yank the dog. If the dog doesn't understand what leash pressure is to begin with, you are going to destroy that animal. You are going to just absolutely, the, the dog is going to be so terrified of life. And then you got to build them back up to get through that. And the average person on this planet, you don't know how to build up that confidence in that dog to bring them back from that. Now you just have a whole hot mess that you're dealing with. And or you got the dog that's super dominant. You put that leash on and, and you pull on that leash and that's when you get that, that, that bite. You're going to bite your hand, bite your arm, bite your leg, bite your foot off. And you're going to be like, I don't know what happened, man. That guy in that video said, if I just, I just do that real quick and, and the dog should, should just walk next to me. You're trying these techniques and that's, it's destroying your dog. You need to know where your dog is. And that's why if something that we all should just do is just sit and just stare at our dogs to figure out what is going on. And sometimes a lot of this, it, it doesn't require someone else. But it, sometimes it does. And a lot of times it does require someone to come in. But you want to come in with that real, that realistic person that's going to help you with a pet dog inside of your home. Not that wild, crazy, savage, competition, obedience looking stuff, that bite work looking stuff. Who wants that in their house? Who cares about that? But we see it and we get, we get like, that's cool. That guy definitely, that girl knows what they're doing because they can convince a dog to do that. It's so easy to convince a dog to do certain things when you're using their drives to do it. You want a dog to bite and look all good then you, or, or do perfect obedience work and it's got a heck of a high prey drive and it loves balls? I mean, whatever. But is your dog a psychopath over balls? Is your dog is huge high prey drive? Is your dog anything like that? Do you want your dog to always be on edge all the time, everything that's going on with it? Or do you want to be able to chill with your dogs and be able to relax with them and real world stuff? That's why I just, I, I, I don't know what it is about me, but I love to just be, be straight up. And, and just show reality, show, show real world how real world is and stop this lies and this manipulation, this, this deceitfulness. My dogs aren't perfect and they're never going to be. And I'm never going to make them look to be perfect because I'm going to show you what reality actually looks like. That we're working on things and we're working on stuff. I'm not going to try to be some, some fake phony looking, look, look at this and I can get them to do these pristine looking things. And, 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 and for one, I don't want to put the stress on my dogs. I don't want to irritate my dog. I don't want to get in a bad relationship with my dogs. The more that I force this animal to do these crazy hardcore stays and these, and these crazy obedience work, he's, he's on the, literally the other side of the house. The dude will sit on the couch like way over there and I'm over here like, hey, hey, Johnny, come here. Like, come here, come here, man. Like, come on. And he's just, he's looking at me like, oh, heck no, dude. I ain't trying to deal with none of that. And it's a, uh, you can come here. And it's just, uh, it's absolutely aggravating. 
And I don't want that. And that's not what I'm going to say again. Real world results, real world expectations. Real world is I want my dog to look at me like, dang, dude, you the, you the coolest of the coolest, man. You the best of the best. And a lot of that doesn't come with transforming them into being these like just super soldiers. Some, yeah, it's cool. Some people like that. Some people need that. Some, you, you need that, some people. But most of us don't need that. Some of these dogs are, are all right. Now, if you had a dog like this inside of your home, then yeah, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to step up your game to make sure that things are good. But then if you don't have that, then it's different. And that's where a good dog trainer that has real dogs and showing you real world expectations is gonna be able to help you and guide you. Because it's not the work that they do to the dog, it's the work that they help you do with your dog. It's, so, it's all so different. It's all so different. Because, because man, today I was gonna, I'll make this least pressure video of how to do this, but I could, if, if you do it wrong, you could ruin your relationship on one simple drill that when I do it and I show it to people, they see a mass amount of success. But if you do it just, just, just a little wrongness, you could, you can go backwards in everything that you've been working on. So I don't want to show things like that to make you get into a worst case scenario. I want to explain to you that you need to find somebody. If you're struggling to that point that I don't know, you need to find somebody. This is something that I said years ago in a video that I made. I took autos off, so don't go try to look for it. Uh, of, uh, years ago that I made about the concept of what, what is it you're, you're, you're doing to hire a dog trainer in your life? What it, you, you need to interview these people. You need to study these people. You need to learn more about these people. You need to figure out what it is that, that, that their lifestyle is like. What do they believe in even? What, it, what, it, what, it, what do they care about? What, what are their desires? Because you, you're bringing someone in your home that is going to be, for a lot of us today, this is why it's hard for me to take my dogs anywhere to let anybody work with them because they mean a lot to us. They mean a lot. And, and someone can come in and absolutely destroy everything that you care about and then make it worse for you and put you in a situation that you, you are now figuring out like, well, I was all right before I paid all this money, but now I'm worse. So now I don't know what to do and know where to go. So you need to interview these people. Don't just see them come with a pretty looking dog and think that they're, you're going to be able to give that to you. You know, uh, us that work with a lot of dogs all day, we, we, you a dog trainer, you work with dogs all day. It just is what it is. And if you don't, you never work with a dog, then don't be no dog trainer. That's, that's weird to me. But uh, we, we work with dogs all the time. So, of course, our dogs are going to look so much, say, better. They're going to look really nice. They're going to be on it. They're going to be on point. They're going to be very, very just, just good looking. But that's the show. I don't want a show. I want real. I want to see how reality is. I want to see and know, like, what, what is your dog like in the house actually with you? Is the dog always 100% crated? It's never able to be free? Is your dog always 100% on leash everywhere you go and it can never calm down without this, 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 and this? Or are you just putting on a show here real quick to just try to make it look good so that you can collect this check real quick? You need to do interviews on people. You need to start studying more people. You need to start figuring out what's right and what's wrong. You need to stop looking at who, who got all, <laughs> I hate to say it like this because my website looks pretty decent, but I pay a guy to do that. <laughs> but uh, who got all the, 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 the greatest reviews and the best looking facility and all of this and, and look, 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 look a little bit lower and start calling those people first before you call the, 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 the ones that are looking for $3,500 up front from you. Start, start, go down the list a little bit and start calling other people and hear their language, hear what they have to say, hear how they talk about dogs. Because that's, that's the main way that I end up getting hired is because they call all these companies. And then somehow, some reason, my number, my name gets, gets in there and they call me and they talk to me and we on the phone for a half hour to an hour because they're just fascinated. They're like, wow, this is, what you say, your language and how you talk is different than all these other people. And these other people got, I got a one star negative review on my stuff for some crazy madness. That says to come check out my uh, uh, YouTube videos. That's probably why people end up calling me because they check out my YouTube and they're like, "Oh, this guy's he, he's, he's talking pretty weird. Let's let's call him," and 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 they start talking to me. And they're like, "You you you how you talk and how you approach and what you look at with dogs is different. You care about me. You're not caring about what the dog is going to look like. You care about me and my and my feelings and, and my desires and my wants. And that's the main thing that a dog trainer should be looking at is you. What do you want? What are you looking for?" And stop putting on somebody what you think that you should want. You think you should have. What do you want? You may not want that perfect heel next to you. I never, ever, ever, I've yet to work one single person that was like, I want my dog in a perfect heel next to me. I have never, ever worked for one person that desired that. But yet all these training companies out here are, are basically saying that's what you need. People want their dog to be able to be free. People love the, 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 the long extended leashes. I love the long extended leashes. I just, my dogs are off leash. They're, they do what they do. 
But uh, I love to be able to let them be able to be free and be able to move and come back when I tell them to come back and move and be around. I don't want them all in, on top of me. I've yet to meet anybody that wants that. They think, they say, oh, I want my dog to heal. But when I actually get down to the real language and the real understanding, they're like, yeah, no, that, I don't want that. I just want them to, to be there. I want to, they, they hang out and sniff something. I want them to come along after about 10 to 20 feet. Come on. That, that's, what, that's what we're looking for. So if that's what you're looking for, find someone that's going to give you what you need. Something that is just, just, just so backwards today that we try to look at the, the who got the shiny stuff and the most expensive stuff and thinking that that's what's going to work. It may. It may. But most cases, it's not. It's the person that is actually looking out for the best of you as opposed to looking out for, let me get this review, let me get that review. That's one thing that I struggle with. Not struggle with, but I don't care. I don't care. Don't, don't give me no feedback. Don't give me no response. Don't give me no nothing. Don't even give me a referral. I don't care. All I care about is you're better and you forget my name and your dog looks good. That's all I care about is to make sure that your stuff is looking good and it's you that did all the work because it, it's going to be you to do all the work. That's, that's my requirements of working with. You're doing the work. You're going for the walks. You're coming with me. It's raining. You better get your rain jacket on because we got stuff we got to do today. You're, you did it all. I didn't do it. I was just there coaching and guiding you. You're doing it. You're making it happen. And when you got to do all that and make it happen, that's, that's all that should matter at the end of the day. Not what I did for you. I don't, who, who cares? And that's the big difference of language that we should be paying attention to when we're looking for someone. We're interviewing someone to come and help us. So many people are just, y'all y'all out of money and, and nowhere at all. Out of lot, a significant amount of money. And you nowhere at all. I mean, that money that you spent could have been three to four months of mortgage or rent payments. And you're out of that. And you got nothing. And if anything, things are worse. And it's something that we, we, we should do more of, of realizing that not everything is, is going to ever be perfect looking. And when someone comes to you and shows you, yeah, this is going to be like this and it's going to be perfect like this, I, I would run away from that. I would run the heck away from that because that's not real. What's real is you're going to be working on that, that one stay, stay like this for years. I've had, now we're coming on, I've had this dog now three years. You're going to come on to it three years to be able to get to something looking like we're good to go. If someone's going to promise you and guarantee you that in two weeks your dog is this, no, no, they're, they're looking for money. They're not looking out for the best of you. And that's something that a lot of us are getting messed up with. Look, look, look one thing that I would just recommend is talk to more and more people. More and more people. And the reason a lot of people get you stuck is because nowadays the new thing is dog trainers are charging for a consultation. So you feel like you're 150 or $250 into it. I got to go forward with this. And that's one thing for me up front that's already a weary thing. They can't even see you and show you what they're capable of doing without charging you to be able to see if this is even going to be able to work out for you. That's just, to me, red flag. Red flag. You can't even get a 15 minute phone call to figure out like what's going on. You got to schedule a, a 45 minute phone call for such and such money to figure out if we're going to work that. To me, that's just red flag, man. That's just red flag. That's just those are those are things like that that we should be paying a little more attention to and figure out is this is this person going to work out for me and for my family and for my kids and be able to give me the dog that I'm that I'm needing. And a lot of times the process is, isn't the prettiest looking process. Sometimes things are going to look a little I don't know and I'm unsure. But that's the thing is someone's going to be able to come in and be able to guide you and, and, and coach you and, and communicate to you and be able to let you know that things are good, man. Things are going to be fine. We're going to work on this. And we're going to continue to keep on working this. And I got your back. You're not in this alone. You got me, man. I'm going to, I'm going to help you out and get you through this. And a lot of times we're, 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 we're going the wrong direction because we think we want the shiny looking things because that's not real, man. It's not real. And we need to get out of that. Get away from that. That's why I like this new website stuff that Timu, Tumu, Tumu, whatever that stuff is called. It's fascinating watching the things that people buy based on what the picture looks like and they finally get it. The most funniest one to me so far is a Christmas tree that's supposed to be six feet tall. It's a six foot tall and they put a little, little diagram and show the family in front of it. And the, the lady gets it in the mail and the thing is this tall. <laughs> it's like not even a foot. And I'm like, that, that's the reality of what things look like out here. The picture and all that stuff, it looks really nice. But then when you actually get it, you're like, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like that, that, that tree is in reality unusable. So you spent all that money, all that time, all those resources and all everything, all that time of researching to get it. And it's not usable. It's not even usable. You're just going to throw it away. How many of y'all run into that situation with paying trainers to help you with your dog? You put all this time, all this effort and you're nowhere and it's unusable and you just throw it away and you give up on it. And then you realize you, you do something else that they, you just thought of uh, off the whim of the day and it, you, you find some success and you like get something better. It's like that's just that's just how things work out here, people. 
And it's something that, that I, again, I'm going to say is stop listening to what, if someone's like, oh, I, I've done this for so long and I got this. Let, let me see it with my dog. Let me see you do something with mine and be able to coach me with mine so that I can be able to replicate what it is that I see you doing to be able to say, let me see that. Let me see you give me some pointers of what I need to change with my leash or what I need to do with this different technique so that I can get better with mine. I don't care what you do over there. Let me see what I can, how you could coach me with mine and see something. A really, really good dog trainer will be able to, in 10 minutes, coach you through something to be able to do with your dog that you're going to say like, wow, I, wow, that's all I needed to change? Because one of my favorite things is right up front, the dog trainer, dog trainer, just <laughs> this blows people's minds. You put the leash on the dog, you hand the leash to the, to, to the client and have them call their dog and the dog doesn't come, have them do a little lean back. Lean, and you watch that dog come running up to them. And they're just blowing through like, bang, whoa, wow, how the heck? All I had to do was just change emotion and my dog came to me? Like, yeah, that's what we should be doing as dog trainers, just showing you what you can do with your dog and how your dog can be with, with you. Not what they could do with it or what someone else can do with it or what they look like with theirs. That's where confusion is going on right now. And that confusion is amazing for the people that are making the money because they're going to keep on stacking and stacking and stacking and doing what they're doing. And, and again, this dog training, there's, there's a, a little bit in there to be able to have a good life, but there's not enough in there to make sure that you're, you're, you, you're just balling and going crazy with it. There's not enough in there. You can make it, you can figure it out, you can be able to do that, but to actually truly help somebody, to truly give somebody some real success, it's, it, it comes down to very, very simple, simple, simple techniques. Simple, simple concepts, simple, simple things to work on each day that you just automatically already do. We're just going to switch the rule up a little bit with that one little thing, change your technique, change your hand style, change your motions, change your language, change your treat, change your toy or throw the treat away, throw the toy away, change this a little bit. But you're not changing to say you got to do this, this, this. No, you're just doing a difference of when you let your dog out for, to go potty, we're just going to wait for a second before he goes out. Let him calm down. OK, then go. Changes of things that you already automatically do all day. Not some huge intervention going on. Some dogs, some, some dogs need that. Your dog is actively biting somebody. Your dog is actively biting you. You need a huge, <laughs> a huge intervention. But that's not everyone. But at the same time, that's my most call, common call. But it's not like I'm able to, to work or, or a lot of peop, people are doing those jobs. That's not all day, every day. But there are a lot of that. There is a lot of that. But it's not the, the, the absolute normal. But for some of us, you're going to get to that point here real soon. Because like just, just, just a week, I saw... I saw what started to get into danger. The dog is playing and it starts to put its mouth on. It starts to put more pressure on. It starts to get more wild up. And it, today it's all right. It's manageable. But at some point it's going to turn to that dog is going to is, is, is going to put you in the hospital. And then it's doing what it is that I see. And I'm glad when people call me before it gets to that hospital stage. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so thankful for that because the dog will get that to that point. Your dog that is l lunging. It, it could be pulling on the leash and barking at people, but if your dog is sitting and it just bolts and goes at the end of the leash, your dog will bite another dog. It will, especially if you're in close proximity, especially if you're here and there's another dog five feet from you and your dog is here and it lunges and goes, it will bite that dog. It's, it's in, it, there's no way that it can't. It has to. Its mindset is focused on, I'm in it. And now if the dog is a mile away, cool, your dog is loading up to go and get it, but that's not what's going on. And that's, that's something that is dangerous. We got to work on that. We got to get past that. And some of that, you, you're not going to watch a video to get past that. You have to bring someone into your home to figure out how to help you get past that. That's something that, I don't know why everyone out here is just the, the smartest and the best and they got all the information, especially when it's, I got my dog looking good, so I could give you the information on how to get yours to look good. No, that's, that's a specific role, a specific task. I'm not going to ask uh, uh, my neighbor, uh, he, he hurt his, his hand, he got, he, he got a, I mean, say as simple as that, he got arthritis and he take Tylenol or he take Advil. I'm not going to take that recommendation to say that that's what I should do. No, I need to go to my doctor, someone who does this, who deals with this, who deals with 50 patients a day, hundreds a month, thousands a month some of these people are, are, are working with, to be able to get the advice from someone who's dealing with a lot of this consistently all the time. To say, my fingers are moving like this. My hands, my knees are doing this. My knees are doing that. Then a doctor's going to say, you know, that Tylenol wouldn't do nothing for you. And you would have been doing it and get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And that doctor would have been able to help you out in 15 minutes. He would have got you the right stuff, the right thing, to change this, check this, make sure your food is all right, make sure your blood is all right, make sure there's nothing else going on with you. He would have figured it out in 15 minutes and got you on the right path. Or you could have listened to that neighbor's advice, oh, I'll just do Tylenol because it works for me. 
and, and you're just, you, you, you're not getting any success. That's what's going on. And I can relate that with anything on this planet, that I can make a 50-hour video about things like that that's going on on this planet. And we're listening to the wrong people to get us to get into a better place. You need to find someone that's able to, able to be with you and teach and coach you how to do you with your dog. I can't do it for you. No one else can. Only you can with yours. That's something that we really need to start thinking more about and thinking a whole lot about. This life is amazing, people. Something that I've really come to realize is the more you let the outside noise go, the better your life starts to get. The more you're on focus and on track of doing what it is you need to do. The more you let the outside noise come in, it starts to distract you from what really truly matters to you. Because you start to think like, ooh, and ooh, and ah, and I don't know, is an ah, ooh, and you start to get, you get sidetracked. So sometimes the best thing you need to do is just to cut that noise off and just stick with what it is that, that is in your heart to want to do. And see, is it getting better with what I want? And if it's not, okay, now, now bring someone in to be able to help you out so that you can be able to get that success you're looking for. Thank you.